If I were to ask you what the biggest problems you are facing in your largest enterprise, would you say employees? The answer would be no. Well, if you just meant managing them. That's how it's for me anyway. I run into more problems with litigation exposure from changing regulations. Mine is the employees. They all want to be coddled like as if they are all unique individuals with special needs. What do they know about running the world? Constantly changing rules and requirements on what has to be done before my employees actually work gets longer every year. Both your answers had to do with the unmanageability of your workforce. In both cases it was as a direct result of the goddamn government poking its unwanted nose into our businesses. Gentlemen, government is the enemy. Ron Reagan may have stated it more eloquently, but the message is the same. To preserve the old American way of life, the modern government has to go. I reckon I can see why you wanted to talk indoors. Not something you want the ladies and Bruce's to hear. Well, I do hope you are being flippant about this. The government is a cash cow for me and my aerospace and textiles businesses. You don't have to worry about that. We'll be keeping the parts we like, maybe even growing them. Let me explain things more fully. Remember the business practices that our grandfathers used to tell us about? How would you like to get those good old days back? Every time we try to pin down employees to make those shiftless animals manageable. You know, like it was in the good old days. We wind up with some irritating government prick barking at our staff for simply managing paid employees. It really takes the fun out of owning things. Well, we are going to get those days back. Um. Has this got to do with expanding opportunities in third world countries? No. Oh, is it something to do with that predatory pricing we were talking about earlier? Yes, exactly. You know those damnable peasants are overstating pollution levels in the air and water just so they can take unnecessary time off of work by pretending to be sick. It's just to be lazy. They should drink like gentlemen and they won't get sick so often. If you lay off those ingrates to save a bit of money when you don't need them, the stupid meddling government steps in and pays them unemployment compensation to do nothing. The real rub is, they are handing out the money that they took from us. It's robbery. You want to talk about justified resentment? And, if we lay off people more often, the government charges us a higher rate for the unemployment insurance, which we shouldn't even be paying. It's like you're still paying them to take time off when you were trying to save a little bit of money. How are we supposed to get them motivated to work if we can't force them into a desperate financial position? The goddamned government keeps supporting them with free money for their recreational drugs and their sex devices. If we try to reason with them about taking lower wages, even though we obviously have the stronger position, they act like we owe them something. The peasants are so unreasonable. If we do anything stronger than beg them to tolerate the best working conditions on the planet, the government comes around with its anti-discrimination laws and that awful OSHA. It's like they're everywhere. Seriously. Why do they have to look into office employees' working conditions? They are indoors. These hungry Apple workers don't know how much extra it costs us to have such a safe and healthy workplace for them. This government problem is just like the competition problem. Before we could just sell our product at a painfully low price, but the low price wasn't the goal. The true goal was to force our enemy to lose money past his tolerance. Well, our newer and bigger enemy, the government, gains its profit through taxation. Competitors have costs and income, and governments have services and taxation. A rose by any other name is still a rose. When our competitors' books go in the red, they are bleeding. If the government bleeds, we can kill it. I can lower the government's profit by simply lowering its ability to collect taxes. I will effectively be getting it to play my game of predatory pricing. Since government activities all cost it money, I will. We will find a way for it to have less money. Just like a competitor, when its books go into the red from costs exceeding income, 
the government will have to shut down some operations. The government will lose too much money and have to give up on some of its services. It will be a little bit of work to make sure it gives up on the spending which protects the bloody peasants. We will be doubly leveraged if we get our congressmen to leave the taxes up high on the commoners. If things go as planned, infrastructure will be paid for by the people whom I'm trying to gain control of. Like any great Ponzi scheme, I have to exploit the greed of the common man and completely shift the attention away from my own agenda. I will market lower taxes as if it is better for the economy and better for the little guy. I will call taxes extortion, I will call taxes theft. I will compare paying taxes to feeding seagulls. I will promote rugged individualism and hint that individuals are smart and the government is stupid, and I will have them think that their individual spending decisions are better for them than the collective spending decisions that the government makes to protect them from me. There is a major hurdle left to overcome. We discovered this flaw sometime after that Keynes fellow came up with his convoluted idea of deficit spending. Hey Reginald, was that Keynes guy a puff? Never mind, don't answer that. Where was I? The reason it works with ordinary competitors is I can lose more money than he can. If I tried predatory pricing against somebody with more money than I had, it would be financial suicide. Just think, what if he could have printed his own money as he needed it? That is the last problem to deal with. It is the government's ability to accumulate debt. It's a real problem for me. The government virtually has infinite money, no matter how low I shrink government revenue by lowering tax collections, it just makes pretend it has enough money to deliver services to the peasants by virtue of printing bonds and bills. So you see, debt is the main problem we have. If I can make debt intolerable, even to the peasants, then I can finally make the menace of government so small that I can drown it in a bathtub. I will tell the common man that he can't write checks without enough money to cover them, so why should the government? I will make him feel like his government is cheating the world by deficit spending when it's actually protecting him. I will always refer to debt and deficit numbers and unintelligible summary values of trillions with a histrionics of a Baptist preacher testifying about sin. I will always refer to services rendered by the government as murky spending or waste. I will draw parallels between persons of ill repute and those receiving services by the government to foster distrust and hate from the common man to his government and the others who seek to mooch or for a load off of his hard work. I will say welfare queen often. It will be an unending campaign making all government spending look bad, but at the same time I will ensure through the control of congressmen that the only spending considered for reduction is the type of government service that protects the commoners, or impedes my financial progress. True power isn't controlling your own destiny, it's omnipotently controlling the destiny of others. Even God doesn't try to do that. 